Hello, today is Tuesday, March 30th, 2021. I'm Joe Schmidt from TC2, and this is Staying Connected. We're going to record today's podcast in a different way as our final installment of our What to Watch for in 2021 series. My colleague Mark Shear, TC2's UK Managing Director, is going to orate and cover SD-WAN trends in 2021 and beyond. We'll have a second podcast where we'll return to our normal format, and Mark and I will provide you with some guidance for your SD-WAN initiatives and highlight some pitfalls that you're going to want to avoid. Okay, Mark, take it away. Thanks, Joe. Let's face it, there isn't much that wasn't affected by COVID-driven challenges in the last year. For SD-WAN, the events of 2020 provided even more impetus for a technology concept that was already on a strong growth trajectory. A year when demand for remote working soared, when SD-WAN and managed service providers rapidly adjusted their technical and their commercial propositions to meet a spectacular shift in priorities. A year when SD-WAN moved away from being a standalone solution into being part of the Gartner-coined SASE, Secure Access Service Edge Paradigm. Consider it a fusion of networking, security and cloud services to support the delivery of applications and data services to enterprises. In fact, you can't get away from the term SASE. And there are many interpretations, often conveniently aligned to a particular supplier's offerings. Now, this isn't a bad thing. And certainly SASE is a great vehicle for considering future capability and communications needs in a more holistic way. Advancements in security remain essential given the threats to businesses, not only from bad actors, but also in maintaining that business services and the continuity that's required in a dynamic and very interconnected world. You should be thinking sassy, but also avoiding too much of the there is a single right way evangelist thinking. Within sassy, SD-WAN remains a critical and probably one of the better defined components. You need edge access and control. Whatever the flavor of SASE you like, the capabilities inherent within SD-WAN solutions are essential, and with them, control and effective use of the underlying network connectivity. SD-WAN will continue to bring well-publicized benefits. These include centralized management, dynamic reconfiguration, enhanced network performance, rapid provisioning, in-depth real-time analytics, segmentation, and all sourced properly the opportunity for significant cost reduction. The savings here come primarily through the adaptation of the underlying network transport and also avoiding some of the excessive cost in the SD-WAN acquisition itself. And there are plenty of traps to avoid there. So 2021 is the year SD-WAN kicks on. And what are the major trends that this podcast is supposed to alert you to? Well, first, let's look at SASE. It's going to be burnt into your brain. We will no doubt cover SASE more in future podcasts as it's transforming how we consider the wide area network and with its security architectures. Some of the concepts are not new, just badged differently, but regardless, SD-WAN is one of the core components and is fundamental to success. Anyone who doesn't mention SD-WAN in the same breath as SASE, frankly, should be shown the door. For SD-WAN implementations, After the necessary attention to other business priorities last year, enterprises are going to have to review the lessons learned from 2020 and refocus their attention on their go-forward networking strategies. Some enterprises had initiated their SD-WAN implementations prior to COVID and frankly have muscled through the implementation challenges, e.g. the delivery of equipment, getting teams to the site or having someone there to even let them in. And they're now seeing the SD-WAN benefits. For other enterprises, they've struggled to execute on the plans. The result, some have had seen costly delays in the expected benefits, including cost reduction. In 2021, they are going to have to work through these problems, and this may require some resets in their thinking. We've already seen many pauses in plans or or strategy assessments that in some instances have led to some expensive and suboptimal renewals on current service deals. And intentionally or otherwise, suppliers are not missing the opportunity to squeeze if the contractual clock has run down. And to avoid this in the coming year, you really need to have mapped out your strategy, including how it aligns with current contractual obligations and change opportunities. Sounds like Star Trek, but there will also in 2021 be a return to the enterprise. After a remote worker focus, enterprises will rightly shift back to focusing on the rest of the enterprise locations. And this is going to be complicated, actually, in shifts in place of work strategies, where many organizations are now holding aspirations to shed real estate and office space. And such work policy-led shifts definitely aren't finalized, but interestingly, the inherent flexibility within SD-WAN offerings can actually be an enabler for some of those aspirations. What it does mean is that commercial arrangements for SD-WAN 
and the underlying transport really need to be as flexible as possible. For some, there is also the risk of decision-making inertia as procurement and networking teams wait to see which way they need to jump from corporate decisions before they embark on the necessary work to prepare for future needs. In 2021, to avoid losing time and creating downstream problems or lost opportunities, the smart enterprises are going to continue or actually initiate their SD-WAN sourcing strategy development and engagement via RFPs. Sourcing and implementation is going to take time. Um, some serious time. So as long as it's approached flexibly, these can be kicked off now. And then the detail adjusted as the decisions on the future state of the business is finalized. So what are the SD-WAN players was a a fourth area to consider. Well, the market shifts in SD-WAN suppliers will continue to bite. Examples include Silver Peak's acquisition by Aruba and Cloudgenics by Palo Alto. The Cisco Viptela and VMware Velo cloud-based solutions will continue to main significant traction and no doubt for a variety of reasons need to feature in enterprises' assessments. Often these reasons can be pre-existing supplier relationship driven. Most of the old guard of disruptive players of SD1 um, have actually disappeared and been swallowed up and versus perhaps the, the real standout exception here, but there are others. What this means is that some of the malleable deal opportunities that could be secured in the early days of SD1 are less prevalent. Therefore, in 2021, Failure to apply rigor and best practice in SD-WAN sourcing will bring bigger risks, while big supplier intransigence and inertia will demand that expert market-specific sourcing expertise that was needed in the past with those big players, if you're going to get the best out of that relationship. One of the other areas to consider is also one-stop shop choice or best of breed in terms of your SD-WAN and into SASE solution. Players like Cato, Ariaka, and Open Systems, they include the transport, the security, the edge access and controls, and the management. And they argue that they have the purest alignment with SASE. And it's a truism that the SASE concept plays to their offerings. That said, big total cost risks can be hidden in, in the apparent simplicity. So comprehensive financial and solution comparison is still required. Also, there are many credible providers coming with different perspectives. Key is making sure that you do the apples to oranges comparisons of one-stop options versus best of breed or integrated options, for example, including players such as Zscaler, so that in terms of cost and capability, you get the best comparison and the best decision-making information you possibly can. Credible SD-WAN capability can be delivered within many different wraps, depending on your start point and your needs. An independent assessment and market advice to help avoid mistakes has never been more attractive. So for parting thoughts, as you consider what I've covered already and think about 2021, I mean, it's true SD-WAN is going to be required to unleash the benefits of internet first strategies, and there are many benefits. It's going to facilitate savings against current and future bandwidth costs. And SD-WAN, as I've mentioned, delivers a huge range of alternative or other benefits in terms of capabilities compared to more traditional WAN edge solutions. 2020 didn't really hold SD-WAN back. If anything, it was storing up elastic band-like energy to catapult the technology forward in 2021. The challenge now is how you go about delivering those benefits in the best way possible. 2021 is about making sure you harness the energy without being fired off in the wrong direction. So despite the analogy-rich summary, in the next session, we'll talk about some of the do's and don'ts to successfully moving yourselves forward with SD-WAN. Thanks, Mark. On our next podcast, we'll continue our look at SD-WAN. And in the meantime, if you'd like to talk about SD-WAN or any other ICT needs that you may have, please contact Mark, me, or any of our LB3 and TC2 colleagues by giving us a call or dropping us an email. You can also stay up to date by subscribing to these podcasts, checking out our websites, or by following us on LinkedIn.